Do you want to learn how to disassemble, rebuild, and troubleshoot the great CLAC WS1 water treatment valve? Well, that's what we're talking about here today. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. So I've often said that the CLAC WS1 is the best water treatment valve in the business, and I've done lots of videos on troubleshooting these valves and a lot of other great information, but I thought today I'd do a live stream and I'd actually disassemble it on YouTube live right now for you today and uh, so you can check it out. This is a great um, live stream for anyone that's involved in the water treatment business, is a plumber or is a do-it-yourselfer at home and uh, just wants to know how, how to service these valves or just wants to know all about them and to see if it's a great fit for them and, uh, and to learn why I keep saying that it's the, it's the greatest water treatment valve out there. So uh, just a couple of things uh, before we get started on this is uh, I am working on a uh, about a 20 second delay so if you have any questions uh, during the the live stream uh, just post them to the right of your screen there you can post them and uh, and I'll get to them in due course um, so I guess if one of the the, the first questions is um, where is this uh, CLAC WS1 valve used well obviously it's used on water softeners but a whole lot more it's also used on um, uh, iron filters, it's used on tannin filters, it's used on automatic backwashing filters, it's uh, used on neutralizing filters, it's used on a whole bunch of different uh, other water treatment products and uh, the valve is the same, there's just some subtle differences between them. So this is a five button valve and the five button valve can be arranged in three and two as this one is here or it can also be arranged the five buttons straight across. This is actually a WS1CC valve. It's got uh, some more programming and some more information that can be put in. And this is the classic um, CLAC WS1 valve with the five buttons across. This is the original one that came out in the year 2000. And uh, since then, there have been uh, more different models that have come, have come across. You may also see one with three buttons like this. So the difference between a three button and a five button is that the three button is a time clock valve. So that's typically used on things like uh, backwashing carbon filters, backwashing um, sediment filters, things like that, where it's not a metered uh, filter. So uh, anyway, um, like I say, it can be used in all those different uh, areas. And let's see what else we've got here for you. So, um, so where do we start? So I guess before you do any work on this kind of a valve or any kind of water treatment valve, you always have to start at the same place. And that is you have to put the unit on bypass. So this has a bypass valve at the back, built in the back here. And what you do is these two red shutoffs here are shaped like an arrow. So what you do is you point the two arrows toward, the, toward each other, toward the middle. By doing that, now you've bypassed the unit. So once you've bypassed the unit, then you need to release the pressure inside the valve. And to do that, you start a regeneration cycle. So you, you push the regen button and you hold it down for five seconds. And after five seconds or so, you'll hear that. And that is the valve um, starting up the cycle. So what it's doing now, it's releasing all the pressure inside the valve and it's releasing it out to the drain. So you hear some water running to drain. And this is the drain line here. You hear some water running to drain, and then they hear it slowly die off. And once that's happened, the pressure has been released. All right, so then the, the next step is that you would remove the faceplate. So we click the two tabs on either side, and the faceplate comes right off. So one of the neat things about the clack valve, historically they always had the manual or a basic manual inside here, inside here. But now, if you look at what's inside here, you see a QR code. See that? I hope you can see that in uh, the focus. Yep, that's showed up, showing up. Okay, so if you have a QR reader on your cell phone, like I do, and if you open that QR reader, and hope you can see that, you press OK, and it takes you right into the, uh, the, the section of the CLAC website that shows you the manual for the different models. So you can see there's uh, four different models there. There's a three button, a five button straight across, and then two other uh, five button valves. So you just click on the one that you have. Come on, clack, don't make me a liar. All right, so I clicked on there, and there's a basic manual that comes up. And what I mean by a basic manual, it shows you things like how to bypass it, 
how to set the time, etc. So again, that's a great little manual that comes in there. If you're looking for a more in-depth manual, uh, you can always uh, send us an email and we can email you one depending on uh, which valve you have. Okay, great. So you've got the faceplate off. So the, now the next step is, uh, so this is, so I'll turn it like this so you can see a little bit better. And uh, so this is, uh, right now it's counting down. So what we can do is uh, we need to disconnect the power. So you see there's electrical connections along the bottom here. And uh, so depending on what the valve is doing, if it's a metered valve, how do you know if it's a metered valve? If you look at the side here, do you see this gray wire here? That's going to the meter over here. So, um, so that's the gray wire here. So actually, before I disconnect that, why don't I show you a little bit about the meter? So to get to the meter, you'd unscrew this. Now, if this valve was connected, even though you released the pressure, when you open up the meter, there's going to be some water comes out. So you can use a screwdriver to do this, or you can use, you know, I've used the loony. We're up here in Canada, so I've used the loony for this before, and then you can pull out the meter. So the turbine that controls it. So this is the turbine that spins when water's flowing through it. And uh, so one way that you can uh, check the turbine is if you take this, I'm just going to take it to the end of its cycle so it's back in service. Once it starts counting down the minutes it, within each cycle, if you press the regen button again, then it will take you to the, to the next cycle or to the end in this case, because this was the second cycle. So this is actually programmed as an air over media, iron or sulfur filter, something like that. All right. Okay, so it's back to the home screen. You know when it's on home screen, when it has the current time. So if I blow on this to simulate water flowing through, can you see that the word filtering is flashing in the top left corner there? I'll do it again. See that? So that's how it tests the meter. So it, it'll flash a few seconds longer even after the meter stops or the turbine stops. So that's how you can uh, test the meter. All right. So again, we'll put that back in there. So typically the meter is only included uh, in water softeners, um, tannin filters, uh, sometimes air over media iron filters have them too. All right, so moving right along. So you see there's three electrical connections. So on this one, this is for the motor, this is for the, uh, the power, and this one here is the one for the meter, the gray wire that we were just looking at. All right, so I'm just gonna show you very quickly how to uh, remove the motor. It's gotta be the, so many things about this valve are so easy to service, and uh, replacing the motor is, <laughs> is a biggie. So to replace the motor, all you would do is disconnect it electri electrically, then it has the snap ring along the bottom here, and then all you do is just push it in and the motor slides right out. That's amazing how easy that is to change. Now, having said all that, in 18 years of doing service work on uh, water treatment equipment, including clack valves, how many motors have I changed in the field? None. <laughs> They're incredibly reliable. So, uh, but uh, anyway, all right, so we'll click that back in there. Good. Okay, so to disconnect the power, you would connect this one. It's this one here. So again, if your valve is a backwashing valve or one that doesn't have a meter, you won't have this electrical connection here. But I'm gonna disconnect that now. And uh, so if you're just removing the circuit board, then you would disconnect the motor at this point too. So removing the circuit board is super easy. So I'm just gonna slide this a little bit forward so you can see a little bit better. So you see there's one tab in the middle here at the top. So all you would do is you would lift up that tab and the circuit board comes right out. So again, you lift that up, pull the circuit board forward and you can replace it. And if anyone's ever done any work on uh, uh, any of the other brands of uh, water uh, softening valves and try to remove a circuit board, it's a big process. And uh, this one is so simple to remove and so simple to replace. So, and uh, one, gr one tip, for water treatment equipment of any sort that's electrically, use a surge suppressor. A surge suppressor will make these boards last a lot longer. And uh, that's about the only reason why these boards fail is if you've had a brownout or something like that, that's affect the power. So to put the uh, circuit board back in, you just line up the two tabs at the bottom and then click it in at the top. All right, so we wanna remove this, this whole unit. We wanna disassemble it. 
That's what I promised you here. Okay, so these wires that are on the side here, turn this here so you can see a little bit better. So all you do is unclip those. You can set them up here out of the way. And then there's two tabs at the top, at the very top. See these two tabs up here? So all you do is just lift those two tabs and the whole cradle comes out in one piece like that. Whole thing comes out. So then all you do is you can just set that aside. I'll put it over here. All right, so now to get into the piston and the seal pack is inside here. So why would you have to get into the, the piston and seal pack? Well, if this is an iron filter or a water softener on well water that has iron, you're going to have some buildup inside on that, um, on that seal pack inside there. Um, it could be a water softener too. What happens is the seals, so this is a seal pack here that comes in a unit like this. I'll hold it a little closer so you can see a little bit better. There you go. And it comes in, totally assembled in a unit like this. But what can happen over, over years or if there's really rough um, water coming in here like water that has uh, lots of iron or lots of grit in it, as the piston goes back and forth, it can foul these uh, O-rings inside here. And then what will happen is um, occasionally I'll get a call that people say, well, when the water softener or the iron filter or whatever it is is in service, I can hear water still trickling down to the drain. And what that's telling you is that this and or the piston has been compromised, so this has to be replaced. So that's what we're, this is the next stage of what we're going to here right now is to remove this section here. All right, so Clack makes this great tool. If you're looking where to get one, you, we, can, we have them on our website. So you just click this in here. It just fits right in there. Hold it up close. And you can use that to, uh, to start to unscrew the drive assembly, they call this. All right, so once I've got it loosened up, then we'll just unscrew this. Okay, so again, if this is in use, there will be some water coming under here. Again, because you've bypassed it, it's not going to be under pressure, but there will be water that comes out. So make sure you've got something to cap catch that water. So we pull it out here and here. All right, so this is what comes out of there. And uh, so what you're looking at here, just making sure that you can see it, yep, you can, is this is the piston and this is the brine piston. So if what you're working on is a water softener or an air over media iron or sulfur filter, you'll have the piston and the brine piston. If it's a backwashable filter, it's just going to have the piston. If it's a water softener, it's going to have the piston and the brine piston. They're both going to be there. So this unit here is kind of a Frankenstein. This is the one that I use uh, when I do uh, consumer shows, uh, cottage shows, that kind of thing. So, um, so uh, you can see this is used. This was uh, used as an iron filter at one time. And uh, so, but these things are super easy to replace and super easy to uh, disassemble. So you can see it's tabbed in there. So all you do is just slide that out like that. It's the brine piston. And this one here, now you may have to extend it. And to extend it, you just turn so, so it comes out. So again, this comes out. So one of the great things about this is it's keyed. So it will only fit one way. You can't put this in the wrong way. All right. So then the next thing is to remove the, the seal pack. This is what the seal pack looks like. So again, this was an iron filter, so you can see it's quite dirty. With iron, these can get become super dirty. Like I mean super dirty. Like it looks like melted fudge sickle in here. Uh, it's, it's just totally covered with uh, iron in that. And if you run into that, um, it's a good idea to clean it. And as long as it's not leaking, you can actually clean it and reassemble it. How do you clean it? Well, the obvious way is you'd run it under the faucet and that get rid of most of the iron that's clogged on here. But what else you could do is you can use a product like this. This is uh, Rust Out or, re yeah, Rust Out. So you can use that. Again, that's available on our e-commerce website if you're looking for that. And uh, so what you do is you just take a bucket of water, you, you put some of that powder in it, dissolve it in the water, and then you take these parts and you put them in that bucket, you leave it overnight, you come back in the morning, the water will be perfectly clear and this will look like brand new. And, uh, and then it's time to reassemble it. So you can also clean out 
inside here. And again, you can use that uh, uh, liquid after you've uh, dissolved it in water, that liquid rust out, and you can wash, wash out the inside of the valve here with that to uh, clean it up. All right, so once you've cleaned all that up and you, you've got the, uh, the uh, spacer stack all cleaned up, then you can just reassemble this. So I should mention too is that sometimes this spacer stack is stuck in there. And it's stuck in there that you cannot get it out. You try prying it out, you try putting your fingers in there and pulling it out, you try doing all kinds of things. If you cannot get that thing out of there, Clack actually makes a tool to get that out. And this is it here. I'll hold it a little closer here so you can see. But uh, it is actually made so that when you apply some pressure, it spreads like this to hook into the inside so that you can pull it out. Now, how many times have you used one of these in the field? Never. <laughs> I've always gotten them out without any problem. But, uh, but like I say, we do have one. And uh, if we ever run into that situation, we're covered. All right. So, spacer stack goes back in, and then you need to reassemble the drive, okay? So again, the piston is keyed. Now, if you're pu putting, if you're cleaning up the old piston and you're reusing the piston, what you should do is on these uh, outside surfaces here, you should use some very fine sandpaper and just sand them. And uh, that just cleans it up a little bit so it slides in and out. Uh, more easily, especially if, like I say, if you've got a lot of iron or if you've got a lot of sand, sediment in your water, that kind of thing, that's a good thing to do. And, uh, and same with this little uh, brine piston. Now, if your spacer stack is leaking or the seals are gone in the spacer stack or it's just too far gone, then I recommend replacing the spacer stack, well, you need to anyway, but also replacing the piston and the, and the brine piston. They're not all that expensive, and that way you've got a whole new assembly, and, uh, and that makes a lot of sense. So I have seen these two where the people are in well water, and they've had a problem with the well, and they've got sand in their well, and the sand has been sucked up, and it totally fills all this, totally fills, totally fills inside here, and I've actually seen it actually snap this. So if you have that situation, obviously you need to spin down filter or something like that before the system to make sure you get rid of that sand uh, or correct the problem in the well, obviously. And uh, Okay, so then all you need to do is reassemble this. So if you, if you look closely here, and again, I don't know if you can see it or not, right up here, okay? So what it says up there is no lubricant on clear seals. What they mean by clear seals is that these clear seals that are here, these are the clear seals. What they don't mean is the O-ring that's around here, the black O-ring. So I usually use some plumber's clear silicone grease on those O-rings and, uh, and then put that back in. So all right, so then we feed that in like that. And start tightening that up. So I take it hand tight as far as I can, which looks like I'm just about there. And then we use our clack tool. Close that up. Thanks for watching, folks. I can see uh, more and more people are tuning in. And uh, thanks. I appreciate the support watching this live stream. All right. Great. So we've got that together. So um, if this part is protruding too far, it's going to make it difficult to get the assembly back together. So what I normally do is I just turn this, whoops, turn it in this direction so that this goes inside. Like that, it makes it a little easier to reassemble. Okay, great, so we got that part and uh, we put this together. So there's two little hooks here and the feet just hook into there. Oh, actually before we do that, one thing you have to be careful of is these wires up here. So there's a, a little strain relief notches up here where the wire has to go. And you have to make sure, like I didn't, you have to make sure that these wires are pushed all the way in, into those strain relief. I've come across a number of valves where someone did not do that, and it actually caused problems because this wouldn't click shut. Yeah. 
So both tabs at the top here need to click all the way down. All right. So turn it this way. So then we thread through the sides here. And if you've estimated the length it correctly, then these will plug in here perfectly. But Gary didn't estimate that length correctly, so we have to do this again. All right. Take that off. So pull this black wire out and pull it up a little longer. There. If you have it too long, it'll foul at the bottom. So, But after you've done it a couple times, well, I said that. <laughs> I've done it a couple thousand times. And I still had a problem, didn't I? All right, so we'll thread this back through here. And just like magic, whoops, I should say, plug this in here. So you want to plug the power in last. Make sure the motor's plugged in first. If you plug in the power before um, the other things, when you, when you plug in the motor or whatever, you'll get an error message, OK? So we plug this in. And then you'll see it'll start to go to its startup procedure. So what it now does, it's moving the piston into the right spot. So it's uh, back in service. And it's getting the whole uh, valve set up for doing its job for uh, water filtration, water softening, tannins, wh whatever it's, uh, it's being used for. All right, so while, we're, while we've got the faceplate off, I'd like to talk about error codes. So occasionally, you'll get an error code. And one of the most common error codes is that the unit can't find home. And that may be because there was a, a power blip when it was during one of its cycles. Could be a number of reasons. Could be a, a, a bit of a hiccup with the, the piston going back and forth or something like that. And you get an error code on this, the screen. When you do, take the faceplate off, disconnect the power, Give it about a minute or so, so it totally powers down. And what that does, it'll reset the valve. And then you plug it back in. So I know what some of you are thinking at this point. You're thinking, well, Gary, if I just unplug it from the wall, that does exactly the same. Actually, it doesn't. Because the four pistons there, or the four pins that are on the power connection, as you'll see, um, they control that reset. Okay, So it's important that you unplug it um, fr from here when you want to do the reset. So um, again, while we got the faceplate off, let's talk a little bit too about uh, troubleshooting. So one of the troubleshooting uh, areas that you might run into sometimes, and I find this time of year in the spring in cottage country here, um, when folks have had uh, these uh, units in, in, uh, in storage or they've had them uh, laid out horizontally for, for winter, when they hook up the cottage, get everything running again in the spring, sometimes they'll put it all together and they'll get a blank screen. So, uh-oh, they got a blank screen. So if you get a blank screen, there's one of two problems. Either the, the transformer that plugs into the wall is defective or the circuit board is defective. How do you troubleshoot that? Well, the, the first thing you do is you unplug this and then get a voltage tester. And, uh, and you just put a voltage tester in these pins. I've got a video about that. If you just search on uh, my Gary the Water Guy um, YouTube channel, you'll see a, a great video on uh, blank screen for a clock water softener. And it shows you how to test for voltage. If you're getting voltage here, bad news. You need a new circuit board. If you don't get voltage here, a little better news, all you need is a new transformer. And, uh, and again, we have the circuit boards and the transformers on our e-commerce website. You can just order it. Or if you're a local customer here in Midland, you can stop by our store. We do have them in stock uh, all the time. All right. Great. Now, let's talk a little bit about at the, what's going on at the top here. So this is the connection to the drain. And this is the connection, the brine line, if it's a water softener, it goes through a brine line. If this is a backwashable filter, in other words, uh, it doesn't use brine, or it does, it's not an air over media iron or sulfur filter, where it doesn't use the air injector that would go up here, then there'd just be a plug here. All right, so let's talk about the drain connection for a second. So this is half inch uh, PEX that goes to the drain. And, uh, and this is a uh, compression fitting. So for a water softener, for everything except for what uses air, this works great. If you're using this as an iron filter or a sulfur filter or um, uh, FOK, a, a Katalox iron sulfur and uh, manganese filter, I don't recommend using this fitting that comes with. 
and I'll show you a little closer why. So like I said, this is just a compression fitting. So the more you tighten this, the more it holds it in. But the problem is when it's, when you, when it's used as one of those air over media filters, there's compressed air inside the top of this tank. So when it starts going into its backwash cycle, it has to blow that air out of there. And I've actually seen this blow right off. So what we do in those situations, we use this. So this is a, a, a standard uh, female three quarter inch thread to half inch PEX fitting. Okay, so you can buy this at any Home Depot store or whatever. And, uh, and what we do is we just unscrew this fitting, unscrew this fitting that comes with the equipment and then use this one instead. Some Teflon tape on here, obviously. And put that on there. Okay, and then connect the PEX to it. And that's a nice tight seal so you don't have to worry about it blowing off. So, uh, so that's one suggestion I have if you're using it for air over media, iron or sulfur filter. Another suggestion while we're here is that these two are both the same size. So in, under no circumstances should you ever disconnect both of them because there's a 50-50 chance when it comes time to put it back together, you'll put it back the wrong way and that will be disastrous. So I always suggest just doing one at a time. All right, so and it has these little C-clips these C clips here, I guess that would be an E clip, wouldn't it? The camera picking that up? No, too close. There, this, this E clip. And uh, that's what locks it in place. So always make sure it's clicked all the way in and then pull up on it just to make sure that it's uh, tight. All right, so this is, like I say, this is the brine connection. So this would be for a water softener or a tannin filter. And uh, so again, you've got the same E clip. You just pull up on that. And uh, that's what that looks like. Can the camera focus? Yes, it can. All right, great. And uh, so that's the fitting. So this is a quick connect fitting, okay? This uh, connection here. So this is uh, like a John Guest fitting or a um, shark bite, that kind of thing. So to disconnect this, you push this in, pull, pull the collar back with your fingernails and then pull it out, all right? This is the collar that I was referring to. This collar right here, it's gray. See that? You would pull that back, okay? And then to connect this, you push it in until it stops, but don't stop there, keep going. Push it in and you'll notice it slides in about another quarter of an inch or so. And that's how it locks in place. So you can pull back on it. So that's how that co connection is made for the brine line. All right, so for an air over media, it has a different, different connection than for the brine line. It has one of these, okay? So this is when it goes through um, the air over media systems, they have a 15 minute backwash and then they have a 30 minute air draw. And this is where the air comes in. So it has a check valve in here. The check valve's actually here. And the reason it has a check valve is that it can suck air in through this side here and fill the top of the tank with air, okay? But when it goes through its cycle, it cannot let any water back out, okay? So again, it's the same fitting as what we saw over here. Quick connect fitting, that goes there. So when this unit is going through its cycle, when it's an air over media, iron or sulfur filter, when it's going through its cycle, the first cycle is a 15 minute backwash and the second minute, second cycle is a 30 minute, it'll say brine draw, but it's actually an air draw. When it's going through that cycle, you should, if you listen close to here, you should hear gurgling sound, and that's air being sucked in through here, okay? And if you don't hear that air gurgling sound, there's something wrong. And uh, so I have a great video. Let me see if I can find it here. Yep, this one right here, whoops, too far, there. So if you see this video here, this is uh, iron and sulfur filter not working. And uh, so it's a great troubleshooting video that uh, will help you uh, do that. So what's involved in that? Typically what the problem is, is there's an injector inside here that's clogged. And uh, I would say if there's an Achilles heel of these as an air over media system, 
it's the injector gets clogged fairly readily. Depends how much iron you have. I mean, some folks it'll last eight to 10 years before getting clogged. Some other folks it won't only last two or three years to get clogged. The good news is it's super easy to fix. And that video shows you how to fix it, but I'm gonna show you how to fix it right now too. All right, so this is the, um, this is the cap for the injector. So unscrew that. Now it's not always hand tight. Although I do find that hand tight is enough to seal the water on these units, surprisingly enough. All right, so this is the cap. And if you look inside here, I hope you can see it on the cam. Whoops, I hope you can see it on the camera. You can just barely see it there. It's blue. Okay, you see the blue? All right, so to get that out, normally you can just use the cap. Oops, we got the power cord messed up here. Normally, you can just use the edge of the cap here to pry that out. So if we go in here, by the way, this is sitting up on a box, so it's about the same height as I am. Uh, normally, it wouldn't be this high, although this is 62 inches tall, this unit. All right, so there's the injector there. Okay, so can the camera focus? Yes, it can. All right, and if you look at it from this angle, there's a very small hole in that injector, and what will happen is in time, that will become clogged. That hole is part of a venturi in there, and as water slowly passes through, when it's in the air draw or the brine cycle, that's what creates the suction to suck the air in through here, or if it's a water softener, to suck the brine from the brine tank and run it into this tank, okay? If this is dirty, it isn't gonna happen. So you can clean that. You just have to be very careful that you clean it. I suggest a pointy uh, wooden toothpick because you don't wanna enlarge that hole. If you enlarge that hole, you're gonna have all kinds of problems with the system. Also, these injectors come in different colors. The different colors are for the different size tanks. So make sure when you're ordering a replacement one for your system that you order the same color. And again, we have those on our website. Um, they're, they're quite inexpensive. I think they're less than $15. So most of the time in the field, we don't even clean them. We just replace them. So once you've replaced it, push it all the way down. Now, it's very rare, but I've seen it happen, where that will not come out. There's just so much iron in there, and it hasn't been cleaned for forever, and, uh, and that will not come out. I've tried, I had one customer not too long ago, I tried with using the cap, didn't work. I tried needle nose pliers, didn't work. I tried a whole bunch of things, and finally I actually ripped the, um, the injector apart just trying to pry it out. And I finally pried out, I actually put a, a very small uh, sheet metal screw inside the hole to, to, uh, for it to, to get something to grip to and then pulled it out with a pair of pliers. But that's only happened to me once in 18 years, so it's pretty rare. But uh, so again, changing or cleaning the injector in these systems is super easy. If you compare that to, uh, to some of the auto troll or the fleck valve, uh, water softeners, they're much more difficult. Actually, before I do this, I should mention too. So I'm a big believer of plumber's clear silicone grease, and especially when it comes to O-rings. And uh, so there's an O-ring around here, so that's what I would do. I would put uh, plumber's clear sil silicone grease around here. And the reason I do that is to lubricate this O-ring, because if it's not lubricated, what will happen is the O-ring will stretch slightly. And once it's stretched slightly, guess what? It's gonna leak. So, uh, so if you can do that. So again, that's one of the many tips and tricks I promised you this evening with this live stream. All right, great. So while we're at this end of the, so this is the bypass we spoke about a little bit earlier. So if you, um, if this is being installed in a cabin or a um, cottage or something like that, where, where this is an iron filter, water softener, tannin filter, any of those things, and you want to winterize it, because you're going to turn the heat off during the winter time. Uh, again, I've got a video that goes into great detail about that, but again, I'll just uh, make it uh, quick for you, because we're talking about this great valve. So the, what you would do is, obviously, you turn off the water, you drain the rest of the cottage, and then you can either bypass this and, uh, and then disconnect it. So as you can see, as I just did, this unscrews without any tools. So once you've unscrewed it, okay, then you can lay this down and drain the water out. 
Now, someone in the video uh, made a comment that, yeah, it's a lot more difficult than Gary showed in the video, and, and I guess that's true. So you do need to lay it horizontally, and it actually works better if the bottom is higher than this end to get the water out, and it kind of blub, blub, blubs out. But uh, I mean, the other thing you can do is you can uh, uh, get a fitting and uh, make a connector for a, a compressor. That's what we do when we winterize these for um, local uh, customers in this area. We, we put together a fitting and we hook it up to a compressor and we blow the water out and, uh, and then lay it down horizontally. It is key that you lay it down horizontally uh, for the winter time. Just uh, the past week we had a customer contact us where they didn't lay it down horizontally, they left it standing up and it actually burst the tank when it froze. So uh, just be careful of that. All right, but again, like I say, the clack makes this valve so easy to work on and uh, so easy to work with too. All right. So let me talk a little bit more about the programming and the valve itself. So if you were to purchase one of these uh, systems from us, either our e-commerce site or a DIY to do uh, from our store, they come pre-programmed. And uh, all you need to do is if it's a water softener, you need to program how hard the water is. And I'll show you how easy that is to do. Actually, I put the faceplate on. It's a little easier to follow along. Can you see that? Yes, I'll turn it this way so you can see the scoop, this way so you can see the, the information up on the screen a little bit better. All right, great. So uh, when it comes to, uh, it's just some basic program, you press the next and the up button at the same time. The first thing is say regen days. So that's how many days between regen. And again, this is how they come from the factory, three days. And that's the default that we usually start with. We don't like to let an iron filter, that's what this is programmed as, an iron or sulfur filter. We don't like to leave it go more than three days. We don't want the iron to build up inside the tank. So typically three days is the default. And so then here's a great question too. If you're in a seasonal property, cottage, cabin, that kind of thing, and let's say you go away at the end of the weekend and turn the water off, well, this isn't gonna clean itself after three days because the water's off. It will think it's gonna clean itself, but it's not gonna do that. So in scenarios like that, what I suggest to folks is ideally an hour before it's time for you to go, Press this and hold this button, the regen button, start a regeneration and let it go through its whole cycle. And then when it finishes, shut off your water and go back to the city or, or wherever you go. And, uh, and then when you come back up, put the water back on, you're ready to go. Um, another a second option of doing that, not quite as good, but almost as good, is that if you've been away for a month or something like that, when you come up to use the, the cottage or the cabin on the, the weekend or for an, after an extended period of time away, turn the water back on, regenerate it right then, right there, hold down the button for five seconds, let it go through its cycle, and again, you'll be good to go. So, uh, so that's, that's one way that you can uh, manually override it. Okay, so regen every three days, we press next. So that's what time is gonna regen. The default time is 2 a.m. Just make sure if you've got multiple pieces of equipment, like a water softener, iron filter, tannin filter, backwashable filter, that kind of a scenario, make sure that all the equipment is regenerating at different times. And be mindful of how long the cycles are. This one's only 45 minutes, but a water softener or tannin filter is an hour and a half. So just make sure that those uh, times don't overlap. Press next again and next again. So one thing that you can do with this five button valve that has the three and the two rows, so the two rows of three and two, is if you press next when it's in service, it's gonna show you its flow rate. So it's gonna tell you, so right now you can go in the house or the cottage or the cabin and run some water somewhere and you can see how many gallons per minute of water are actually f flowing through this unit right now. And that's a handy feature. I've run into situations, I had a customer s several years ago uh, that was complaining that his water softener wasn't working. And uh, it was using tons of salt, uh, but it just wasn't working properly. So uh, he wanted a new one. So we put in a new one, put in a new one, and uh, he said, you know what, this new one you put in is using pretty much the same amount of salt as the other one. I said, okay, well, let's have a look. We went and we set it on here, and I said, is anybody using any water? He said, no. But it was showing 0.2 gallons per minute. So there was some water being run in that house all the time at 0.2 gallons per minute. So if you do the arithmetic, that's a lot of water in a day. And uh, what happened was the toilet that was running so slowly, 0.2 gallons per minute, that you couldn't hear it, but this detected it. 
So that's a great feature that's built in. If we press next again, it'll say how many, uh, how many days are remaining, okay? But if this was a water softener, it was programmed as a water softener, it'll actually tell you how many gallons of capacity are remaining in this. Now it doesn't go right down to zero, it typically goes down to its reserve capacity, which is usually somewhere around 10 or 15, uh, sorry, about uh, 60 to 70 gallons of water. It'll re trigger regeneration for that night. What does that look like? So today we had a phone call um, and this is what was being displayed. So can you see that? Yes, I think you can, right up here. See where it says regen today flashing off and on? Customer said, it keeps saying that, but nothing's happening. I don't see anything happening. And that's because it's just telling you that tonight at 2 a.m., the time that's programmed in here for it to regen, that's when it's going to regen. It's just warning you, pre-warning you that that's going to happen uh, tonight. All right, so um, we talked about uh, the word filtering display here. So again, on a metered system like this, it'll say filtering up here. If this is set up as a water softener, when there's water flowing through the water softener, it'll say the word softening up here to tell you that the meter is working and that water's flowing uh, through, through the system. All right, so there's some other programming that we can get into here. Again, really quickly, I have more videos in depth on this. So if you press the next and the down button, it'll allow you to change it between, whoops, I can go back one, between filtering or softening, okay? So filtering is what's classified for, like I say, an FOB, FOC, FOK, an iron sulfur filter. That's how those are set up. So then you press next. So now you can actually change the backwash time. So if you have a situation where, you know, uh, your well pump can't keep up that well, or you've got a holding tank where the backwash water is going, and you may want to cut that down by a few minutes. It does make a fair amount of difference if you cut that down. Press next, and this is the air draw cycle. So again, if you find that uh, water's uh, pretty tight, um, then you can uh, change that down by maybe five minutes or something like that, the time. Um, and the opposite is also true. If you find that, you're, that you know, it's, after it regenerates, uh, it takes care of the iron, takes care of the sulfur in that, but toward the end of the second day or something like that, you're starting to get the symptoms back again. So again, you can uh, increase this time. Press next, but generally right out, this is how it comes, right out of the box. So you don't have to do all this programming. Um, for these air over media systems, all you do have to do is set the current time. Press next, and next. Okay, so that's the current time. So how important is the current time? Well, it's actually very important. It doesn't care what time it is right now, but the problem is if you don't set the right current time, it doesn't know when 2 a.m. when it's regen time is. So whenever it thinks 2 a.m. is, that's when it's going to regenerate. And you don't want it regenerating. I had a call from uh, someone today, and they were saying uh, they had a relative there, and they got up early in the morning, and they went to, um, to run some water, and the water was really brown. And they heard all kinds of racket uh, downstairs from where their water treatment equipment was. Well, what was happening was the iron sulfur filter was going through its cycle. And these folks have a lot of iron in their water. And, uh, and it, at the stage it was at, it actually diverted that water through, through the faucet, so they got brown water coming through. So, uh, and that's why it's important to make sure you set the regen time at a time when there's very little water usage in the home. All right, so I'm seeing a question came through from Dave McClellan. My clock is set up as an iron filter. When water is turned on in the house, should you hear water trickling in the tank? No. Um, Dave, uh, by the way, thanks for the question. No, you won't hear anything um, as, as the units. And that's what folks that have never had water filtration equipment, and we start talking about these equipments because they bought a, a, a rural property or a cottage or something like that, they'll say, how much noise does this stuff make? And I say, well, it only makes noise when it's regenerated. It doesn't make any noise at all when it's in use. Water just flows through. That's it. Thanks for your question, Dave. Anybody else have any questions? Please, um, this live stream is ending in 16 minutes and I'd love to answer your questions um, live. Uh, if you do have any questions after the live stream is done, just put it in the comments down below. I do answer all questions. I try to get to them within a day or two, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but I do answer all questions and I really appreciate getting them. And especially if you have any ideas for upcoming videos or upcoming live streams, I'd love to uh, get your input. Very important to me. All right, so there's other programming that you can go into with these too. They will tell you, they give you 66 days of water history. Now, it has to be a metered unit to do that, okay, a metered unit. So typically it's a water softener, it's a metered unit, uh, tannin filter. 
Tannin filter is a little bit different. So a tannin filter, what's a tannin filter? Looks like a water softener, uses salt like a water softener. In fact, if you see them both side by side, they look identical. Um, tannin filter removes color from water. What's, what's tannins? What's, what's the color? What, what is tannins? So tannins is an organic. So iron is a mineral. And often if you have iron in your water, you get those rusty stains. Well, tannins, you also get sort of brown staining, but it's from an organic. And uh, often, in, at least in this area here, we have a lot of cedars. So as the cedar roots decompose, they tint the water. And then that tinted water gets into the aquifer and it, it tints your water. So uh, it's often misdiagnosed as iron. So just be careful if you have, if you have colored water and uh, you're calling someone in, um, one of the first questions I always, uh, I, I would suggest asking them, do you know how to differentiate between iron and tannins? Because a lot of the guys don't. And uh, we've corrected a lot of systems where someone's uh, misdiagnosed it as iron, put it in an iron filter, doesn't work. They call the, they call the supplier back a couple times and then somehow for some reason the, the guy doesn't call them back anymore. And it's because they put in the wrong equipment. So, uh, so be careful of that with, with tannins. Tannin filter uses more salt than a water softener does because it regenerates uh, more often. All right, great. Um, so uh, what didn't I talk about so far? Okay, let me talk about the float assembly. So this is a question I, I've, got, I've gotten actually a couple times recently. And that is uh, we had a uh, do-it-yourselfer. Um, purchase a tannin. Actually, it was both tannin filters, and it was within the last month or so. And uh, so, this is the float that goes inside the brine tank. Okay, and when when we ship them to you, they have this tape on the end. And when you take the tape off, again, you'll see a fitting on here. Oops. You'll see a a little part. Looks like this. Oh, can that focus? Yes, it does little part that looks like this and you'll see a fitting on the end of here that looks a whole lot like a John Guest type fitting or quick neck fitting and that's exactly what it is. Now you have to be careful with this because there's a, a clip on here comes out like that. All right there. All right so like I say there's a C clip on here. See C clip and uh, so you pull that out. And again, this is a quick connect fitting, like a shark bite or a John Guest type fitting. So you have to pull that clip out first. You take the tubing, you shove it into the fitting as, as you think it stopped, okay? But then you push further and it goes in, like I say, about another quarter of an inch. And it needs to go all the way in like that and you need to lock it with this clip, otherwise it's not gonna work. So in both of the instances when I got a phone call, they had uh, someone help them with the installation and, uh, and they didn't remove the C-clip and they didn't push this all the way home. So what was happening was the tannin filter worked perfectly when they first installed it, but then when it went through its regeneration cycle, instead of sucking the water, the, the brine from the brine tank through this tube and into the brine, um, the brine elbow at the top of the tannin filter, it didn't do that. Okay, so it didn't regenerate properly. So after about a week or, two, or 10 days or something like that, they called, they said, hey, this tannin filter worked perfectly for three or four days, but now it doesn't work. And by the way, it's not using any salt. Or they're saying that, oh, I got a lot of water in my brine tank. I can't figure out why. And that's why, because this fitting wasn't uh, pushed all the way in. And uh, so that's something to check for if uh, you've purchased a water softener or a tannin filter or something like that uh, from us online and either installed it yourself or had a, a local plumber help you out with the installation. All right, great. What didn't I talk about so far? Oh, this. So this is a plug, okay? So if the unit that you have is um, a backwashable filter, like a backwashable sediment filter, backwashable carbon filter, or that kind of thing, instead of having an injector in there, it'll have one of these plugs. Okay, this one's a little beat up because I pulled it out of this unit uh, to show you because this was originally sold, uh, I guess, like I said, this is a Frankenstein. So this, I, I just cobbled pieces together to use for cottage shows and uh, home shows and things like that to show people the equipment. It's incredibly light and, uh, and that's because there's no media inside the tank so it's easier to move around. But, uh, but this is the plug that I pulled out. So one thing that people um, often 
uh, ask me about is these backwashable sediment filters and backwashable carbon filters. Why would someone have that? Well, if you're on a municipal water system and there's a lot of uh, um, chlorine in your water, it's a great way to get rid of that chlorine. Typically, they backwash once a week. So they, as the water passes through, it removes the chlorine from your water. It's installed before the water softener because water softeners hate chlorine and that shortens the life expectancy of the media inside. And then once a week, they backwash, clean themselves up, and they typically last about 15 or 20 years, and you never have to change a filter. So instead of going with a filter cartridge and they have to have a filter wrench, like you probably see behind me on the wall over there, probably out of focus, but uh, as a carbon filter to uh, pre-filter your water for your family so you don't get that horrible chlorine uh, in your home, that's, uh, that's one, uh, this is a great alternative for a backwashing uh, carbon filter. Backwashing sediment filter, that's typically used for folks that either have a lot of dirt in their water, a well water, or um, surface water. People that are drawing from a lake, you may be drawing from a lake. So around here, the lakes often have tannins. So in scenarios like that, they'll have a backwashing uh, sediment filter. They'll ha they may have a backwashing carbon filter too, get rid of chemicals from the water, herbicides, pesticides, that kind of thing. And then it would go into a tannin filter, clean up the, the um, remove the color from the water. And then from there, it would go into um, a ultraviolet light to kill any bacteria. And you always need a five micron pre-filter before an ultraviolet light. Um, so that's, that's usually the system for uh, surface water. Again, for well water, really depends what's in your water. I mean, in our area here, uh, we have some pockets that uh, the water's really bad. So they've got, um, like I say, they've got uh, tannins in their water. They have iron in their water. Some have sediment in their water, sulfur, you know, that rotten egg smell, uh, you know, that kind of hard water, all that kind of stuff uh, is quite common in this area. By the way, um, I'm Gary the Water Guy. Uh, my YouTube channel is GaryTheWaterGuy.com. We have new uh, videos every Saturday morning, usually 5 a.m. I release them. The only time we don't release one Saturday morning is when we released a uh, live stream like we are right now, the Thursday night before. Um, but uh, got over 200 videos, 250 videos on that um, YouTube channel. Lots of great information there for do-it-yourselfers, plumbers, anyone that is interested in the water treatment industry. We really like to uh, share our information with you. I've been in this industry for 18 years and there's a lot of uh, great in information. Uh, some common questions that I get about servicing the uh, clack valve. Um, I've gone through most of them with you so far. Uh, Life expectancy, 20 years plus. I mean, the valve's been around since the year 2000. I can probably count on one hand how many that we've replaced in those 20 years. Uh, very, very, very few. And, uh, you know, we've had a couple customers that, uh, you know, just wanted to start fresh. It's been 18, 19 years. And they say, you know what, I just want a whole brand new system. I'm going into retirement. I'd like to start fresh uh, in my retirement. We've had a couple that something really horrible has happened to them um, because of fires and, and things like that. So uh, they do last an incredibly long time. They are made in USA and uh, they're a great product. Typically, you won't see a clack valve water softener being sold as a clack water softener. They've got a lot of restrictions about that. Ours are sold under the Hume Water Care name. Hume Water Care is our own private label brand. Uh, that's kind of the best of the best. And, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's how we um, label it. Uh, we have over 1,800 items on our e-commerce website. By the way, our e-commerce website, wateristore.com is the US one. Wateristore.ca is the Canadian one. Two separate websites. We offer free shipping in both of them. But if you're from Canada, you need to order from the Canadian one. If you're from the U.S., you need to order from the U.S. one to get the free shipping. No customs and all that other kind of stuff involved. Um, the U.S. ones we ship from U.S. warehouses most of the time. We have a little bit of stock that we ship uh, from Canada. The Canadian one, again, we ship most of it from Canadian warehouses. A little bit gets shipped from uh, U.S. Uh, warehouses uh, to Canada, but, uh, but like I say, it all works out uh, really well. Um, any questions about your water treatment? Like I say, uh, you can put them down below in the comments section down below. I love to read, read your comments and I love to respond to them. Uh, if you need your water tested, we do a basic water test. We don't charge for that. You can mail that to us. Where do you mail it? You mail it to Water Store, 1004 King Street, Midland, Ontario, L4R, zero B eight is our postal code. And we need about 500 milliliters to check that. We got another question here from uh, 
Valley Garan. Oh, he's just thanking me for the live stream. It's uh, 054 hours here in Ireland. Well, thanks a lot. I really appreciate uh, you folks in Ireland tuning in and <laughs> staying up till uh, 1 o'clock in the morning to watch this live stream live. Boy, that's dedication. I really appreciate that. That really uh, makes me feel good and uh, like I'm not wasting my time doing these things. And, uh, and that's what it's all about. Like I say, I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your families. I'm not here to tell you there's something wrong with your excuse me, to tell you that there's something wrong with your water. If you and your families have identified that there's staining, there's smell, there's discoloration, it tastes awful, those kinds of things, I'm here to help you with those uh, concerns. Um, like I say, we're not here to tell you what's wrong with your water. But like I say, if you, have a, if you have a concern about your water, check out our website. Like I say, there's tons of information on there. Um, and uh, each, just about every product on our website, by the way, if you scroll down just up below the pictures, you'll see some squares that say how it works, how to install, things like that. Those are actually YouTube videos. So if you click on that, it'll take you right to one of my YouTube videos that answer that uh, information. So um, usually I do a live stream about once a month. Um, once every five weeks or so, depending on the summertime. I'm always eager to get new topics, new topic ideas. This was a, a little bit different one for us uh, so far. We haven't done a teardown and a rebuild um, on a product before. And I know the Clack WS1 is very popular valve and uh, it's all over the place. How do you know if you have a Clack WS1? That's a great question. Usually one of the giveaways is the bypass valve. Okay, so if you see the bypass valve has these pointy um, levers on it. There's a couple other companies out, out there that have red levers, but this is the only one that I've seen that has these pointy ones. And that usually is, is a, a major clue that it's a, a clack valve. Now some of them, some of the private label ones I've seen out there is being sold under the Water Depot name and a few other names in that have the valve, have a bigger face plate on them and a different configuration, that kind of thing. But Again, if you look for that bypass, it's a clack valve. And if you pull the top off, the, everything inside is exactly the same as what I showed you. Yeah, the circuit boards are configured a little bit differently. This is a four button, which is a super rare one. Um, we have very few customers that have a four button one. Um, I, I sometimes see that more in the US market than I do here. And this is the replacement circuit board with the five buttons across. That's probably the most common one up until about five to seven years ago, that was the most common one. But like I say, this configuration now is uh, quite common. The uh, WS1CC and CC, C, C actually stands for, the second C is for custom. The first C is Canadian, Canadian custom. But again, we do offer this to our US customers. Uh, shipped from uh, Sarasota is where we ship these from in the US. And uh, we've got lots of customers in the US. We help a lot of folks um, all over, including the, the nice gentleman from Ireland uh, that, uh, and I really appreciate his uh, comments. So uh, we don't have any more questions. Like I say, I really encourage you to uh, put your questions down below. And if you feel the, you'd like to get more information about our YouTube channel, please subscribe. There'll be a subscribe button uh, typically in the bottom right-hand corner of, the, oh yeah, I see it there. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you can click on that. And, uh, um, and if you click on that and ask for notifications, you'll actually be notified when my new live streams uh, become available. And I also encourage you to share my videos. It's great if you can share them on YouTube, share them with your friends and things like that. Uh, we've got over 14,000 subscribers and uh, we appreciate every single one of them. And uh, we encourage you to share this content with others. So uh, that's it for me Thursday night, Gary the Water Guy. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it.